So now we're looking at stereoisomerism in transition metal complexes. Okay, and when we talk about stereoisomerism, okay, when we talk about stereoisomerism in transition metal complexes, okay, is divided into two categories. Okay, um, is divided into two categories. The first category that we have is geometric isomerism. Okay, geometric isomerism, and the other category that we have is optical isomerism. optical isomerism. In geometric isomerism, we're going to look at cis-trans isomerism, okay. We're going to look at cis-trans isomerism, okay. Plus there's one other type of isomerism that we're not going to name, okay, but it, it is specifically a geometric isomer or it is specifically a type of geometric isomerism. Okay. So cis-trans is not the only type of geometric isomerism. There are other types of geometric isomerism, okay. And then um, optical, right. When we talk about optical isomerism, okay, we're looking at enantiomers, which are non-superimposable mirror images of each other, right? So two molecules that are mirror images of each other, but they're non-identical. So first, we're just going to look at cis-trans isomerism, okay? We're going to look at cis-trans isomerism, right? And the first case that we have of cis-trans isomerism is in square planar complexes, okay? Square planar complexes. Now, one example that we have is cisplatin versus transplatin. Platin has the following structural formula, okay? It's Pt, NH3 twice, Cl2, okay? Here platinum has a, platinum has an oxidation number of plus two, right? And then you have two chlorides which are minus one, so this is a neutral, this is a neutral complex, okay? Now for this molecule, right, platinum has square planar geometry, Okay, platinum has square planar geometry and what you can have is you can have the two chlorines opposite each other and the two ammonias opposite each other okay or you can have the two chlorines on the same side and the two ammonias on the same side okay so when the two chlorines are on opposite sides Right, that is the that is the trans isomer, right? And the two ammonias are on opposite sides. So this is called this is called transplatin. Okay. And in this case, the two chlorines are on the same side and the two ammonias are also on the same side. So this is cisplatin. So again, in trans in the trans isomer, the identical groups are 180 degrees from each other, and in the cis isomer, they're 90 degrees from each other. Now, when we talk about isomers, we should also we should also be able to def we should also be able to determine whether the isomer has a dipole or not. Okay, we should be able to determine whether the isomer has a dipole or not. Now, if you look at the trans isomer, there is no net dipole, right? Because the two chlorines cancel each other out, right? And the two ammonias also cancel each other out, so there is no net dipole. Okay, so we can say we can say that there is no net dipole for this particular isomer, okay? Or we can say it's a non-polar, it's a non-polar complex, right? And if you were asked as to why there's no net dipole, you would simply say that the dipoles cancel each other out, okay? So dipoles cancel each other out. There's no net dipole, okay? Now on the other hand, so in the case of cisplatin, right, we see that we have chlorine on one side of the molecule and ammonia on the other side. So you don't have identical groups cancelling each other out here, okay. The chlorines aren't cancelling each other out. The ammonia aren't cancelling each other out. So here we can say that, right, the dipoles do not cancel each other, okay. Dipoles do not cancel. So we can say that this is a, this, a, this has a net dipole, right. So it's polar. Just another example, another example of a square planar complex that does have, that does have, uh, you know, or, or exhibit cis-trans isomerism is NiCN2Br2, okay. This is another example of a, this is another example of a, um, of a square planar, square planar complex. Now in this case, again, we can have the nickel, Okay, nickel 
can either be bonded to the two cyanides on opposite ends and the two bromides on opposite ends, right? That would be the trans isomer, right? Or we can have, or we can have the two bromines, okay, on the same side and the two cyanides on the same side. Okay, this is the cis isomer. Okay. So again, it's the cis isomer that's going to have a, if you look at the complex molecule itself, it's the cis isomer that will have a net dipole, whereas the trans isomer will not. Now over here again, the polar complex is the, is the cis complex and then the trans one is non-polar. Okay, it does not have a, the complex does not have a net dipole. All right, now, um, now one last thing I want to mention is that if you were given this formula and you were told that it exhibits stereoisomerism, you should be able to deduce that it would be a square planar complex because we know it's a four coordinate complex and for such a four coordinate complex to exhibit stereoisomerism, it has to be cis trans or geometric isomerism in this case, okay. So it must be a square planar complex, it wouldn't be tetrahedral. If you were given a four coordinate complex and told it doesn't exhibit stereoisomerism like this, then it would be a tetrahedral geometry. The next case that we have, the next case that we have of cis trans isomerism is when we have cis trans isomerism in octahedral complexes, okay. Cis trans and octahedral complex. So obviously an octahedral complex is a six coordinate complex, right, it's a six coordinate complex. An example, example that we have is, we have the example of this guy, okay, Cu, NH3, 4, H2O twice, okay, there's a copper 2 complex, okay, with a 2 plus charge, it's a copper 2 complex with a 2 plus charge. Now this complex is, has octahedral geometry, right, this complex has octahedral geometry, right, like this, and if you look at the cis isomer, okay, in the cis isomer what we have is we have the two identical groups, in this case that would be the two water molecules are going to be 90 degrees from each other, okay. Whereas in the trans isomer, the two identical groups will be 180 degrees from each other. Okay? In the cis isomer, the two identical groups are 90 degrees from each other. In the trans isomer, the two identical groups are 180 degrees from each other. Then we have our four NH3s. Right? NH3, 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 and then NH3. Okay. So this is what we have here. So again, right, we can say that. And again, when you're drawing these isomers, make sure you show the charges with the square brackets, right? So this isomer on the left is the cis isomer, where the two identical groups are on the same side, and the isomer on the right is the trans isomer, okay? And again, the cis isomer is, has a net dipole, right? Where the trans isomer does not have a net dipole, right? Because again, the cis isomer, in the trans isomer, the two identical, all the identical groups cancel each other out. But in the cis isomer, they don't cancel each other out. So we have other types of geometric isomerism as well, other than cis trans, right? And, and one example of that is, one example is of that is for the following, for the following complex, okay? Let's say that I have the complex, the complex CO, NH3 thrice, NO2 thrice, right? Now in this, now in this case, you have two different monodentate ligands, okay? You have, you have ammonia, which is the neutral ligand, and the other ligand that you have here is NO2 minus, okay? That's also a monodentate ligand, right? Um, so we have NO2 minus ligand, and we have ammonia, which is obviously a neutral, which is obviously a neutral um, ligand, okay? Now in this case, the overall oxidation state is zero for this complex, which means that CO has an oxidation number of plus three, because your three NO2 are one minus each, right? So this is neutral. And if you look at the isomers, 
for this particular structure. This particular structure represents two different, two different molecules. Okay. What we can have is we can have cobalt, right? This is an octahedral complex because we have six monodentate ligands. We have an octahedral complex, right? And one possibility that we have is one possibility that we have is that um, one possibility that we have is that the nitrogen, the nitrogen from the NO2 minus is what bonds, what bonds to, or bonds to the cobalt. Okay, just like the nitrogen from ammonia. So we have either all the NO2 minuses, all 90 degrees from each other. Okay, they're all 90 degrees from each other. And all the ammonias are also 90 degrees from each other. Okay, that's one possibility. Okay. This is one possibility. The other possibility is instead of having three of the same, all 90 degrees from each other, right? You can have two NO2s 90 degrees from each other. And then one of them is going to be 180 degrees from this one, right? So this is the other geometric isomer. So this is the other geometric isomer. So here again, you have NH3, NH3. Make sure again you show it clearly bonded to the nitrogen, right? And you have NH3. So both of these, both of these are geometric isomers of each other. Both of them have the same formula. They have the same structural formula, right? But they, you can clearly see that they have different different arrangement of atoms in space, right? Now we're going to look at optical isomerism, okay? And optical isomerism arises um, when we have bidentate ligands, okay? And in optical isomerism, we'll only be looking at octahedral complexes where we have bidentate ligands, okay? So one example where you have optical isomerism is for the following, com for the following complex. We have Ni, En3, 2 plus. Over here, En stands for ethane one two diamine. Okay, so En is referring to En is referring to NH two CH two CH two NH two. Okay, that's the molecule it represents. Right, it's a neutral bidentate ligand. Okay, so in this particular complex, in this particular complex, we have we have three bidentate ligands bonded to the nickel. Which means that each of these ligands is making two dative bonds. So there's be, there's six dative bonds being made to the six dative bonds being made to the central metal ion. So this is an octahedral complex. So over here, each of the nitrogen atoms has a lone pair, right? So that's what donates the that's what donates the uh, nitrogen is what donates the lone pair to form dative bonds with the metal ion. Okay. This is again this is this is ethane one two diamine, also known as one two diamino ethane. So over here, I want you to show the two different isomers that have this particular structural formula. And we're going to use this representation. Okay, we're going to use we're going to use this representation to represent the bidentate ligand. Okay, this this is the representation we'll use to represent to represent En in this case. Okay, ethane 1, 2 diamine. So here we have a nickel, right? That is making an octahedral complex okay, so the nickel is making an octahedral complex okay, so this is what we have right, and again we have to show the two isomers so for the first isomer what we have is we have again we have two bidentate ligands or we have three bidentate ligands bonded to the central metal ion so we have this Now the mirror image of this guy, the mirror image for this particular complex, we take the mirror image of this complex, okay. In this complex again, we've clearly shown that we have, we have three bidentate ligands, each of which is making two dative bonds to the central metal ion, right. And the mirror image of this guy is non-identical to this particular isomer, okay. So we have two non-superimposable or non-identical mirror images of each other, okay? So they're enantiomers of each other. So if we draw the mirror image. So the mirror image for this is the ones that you've shown here on this side, right? Will be shown on the near side to the mirror image. In the mirror image, so we have this, right? This guy here will be shown again on the near side. So we have this, okay? And then 
the one on this far side here will be shown on the far side here okay so these these two complexes are actually not the same they're non identical this particular structural formula could be this isomer or this isomer okay they're optical isomers or enantiomers of each other okay non superimposable mirror images of each other so whenever you have three bidentate ligands okay for an octahedral complex the type of isomerism will always be optical okay and it'll always have that particular comp that particular complex will always exist as or as two possible two possible optical isomers okay so this this structural formula represents two different complexes okay it could be this one or this one so the coordination number obviously for this complex is 6 because you have two bidentate ligands each bidentate ligand is making each bidentate ligand is making two dative bonds so if you have three bidentate ligands you are making 3 times 2 which is 6 coordinate bonds to the central metal ion so the coordination number is 6 complex is octahedral okay and we only look at optical isomerism for octahedral complexes okay one possibility is when you have the when you have three bidentate ligands right bonded to a metal ion in that case you have an octahedral complex okay and that octahedral complex can be one of two different optical isomers so for the next example of stereoisomerism we're going to look at the following complex we have cobalt okay that is bonded to NH2, CH2, CH2, NH2, right, twice, and then we have Cl2. Okay, and the overall charge on this complex is 1 plus. So this complex also has a coordination number of 6 because you have two of these ethane 1, 2 diamine. This is a bidentate ligand, right? So each of these guys is making two dative bonds. You have two of those, right? So you have four dative bonds being made by the two bidentate ligands, plus you have two monodentate ligands which are the fluorine so the coordination number is six okay six coordinate bonds are being made to the metal ion so again we get an octahedral complex okay again we get an octahedral complex okay so we have an octahedral complex and another thing to note is that the oxidation number of the cobalt here is plus three because the overall is plus 1, right, ethane 1 to diamine is neutral, whereas chloride is 1 minus. So you have two of these 1 minuses and the overall is 1 plus, so that means the cobalt is 3 plus, right, plus 3 minus 2 gives us an overall oxidation number of plus 1. So now let's draw these octahedral complexes, right, make sure we're going to show the overall charge as well, which is plus 1. So we have cobalt, right, that is bonded to, again, there are six dative bonds or six coordinate bonds being made to the central metal ion here, right? And again, cobalt has the oxidation number plus three in this particular complex. So we have this, then we have this, and we have this, right? Now, we want to figure out what types of stereoisomerism we have here, okay? So, take this, right? We're going to figure out how many... We're going to figure out what type of stereoisomerism we have here, okay? Now, one possibility that we have, one possibility that we have is if both the chlorine atoms are opposite each other, right? Which would mean, so over here we'd have one bidentate ligand here and one bidentate ligand here, okay? And we're going to use, we're going to use this representation for, we're going to use this representation for ethane 1, 2 diamine, okay? For NH2. This is just another way of representing ethane 1, 2 diamine, all right? So one possibility that we have is if the two chlorines are opposite each other and then you have the two bidentate ligands here, right? So you have En, En, and then you have the other bidentate ligand right here, right? So this is one possibility. So this isomer has an overall charge of plus 1, right? The overall charge for the complex is plus 1 right and this is the trans isomer okay this is the trans isomer because the two identical groups the two chlorines are 180 degrees from each other so this is the trans isomer the other possibility that we have over here is we can have the cis isomer in the cis isomer the two chlorines will be 90 degrees from each other 
and the two bidentate ligands will also be uh, will be on this side right. So, here here the two chlorines are on the same side here the two chlorines were opposite each other okay here the 90 degrees from each other here they are 180 degrees from each other. So, here we have E n for the bidentate ligand okay we have E n for the bidentate ligand and this has an overall charge of this has an overall charge of plus 1. So this is the cis isomer. So what we have is this particular complex. This particular complex does show geometric isomerism, right? We have cis trans isomerism here. But in addition to geometric isomerism, okay, we also have optical isomerism here. Okay, the cis isomer also shows optical isomerism. Okay, the cis isomer also shows optical isomerism. Now, it's not going to be the trans isomer because the trans isomer is the trans isomer is symmetric. Okay, so it will not show optical isomerism, but the cis isomer will show optical isomerism. Okay, so what you have is for the cis isomer, if you make the mirror image, if you make the mirror image for the cis isomer, okay, it's going to be non-identical. Okay, so again we have non-superimposable mirror images of each other. Okay, so this is what we have. Right, if we take the mirror image, we have the two chlorines again on the near side here. Right, so they'll be here. Right, so we have Cl, Cl, right, and then we have the two bidentate ligands, right, this and this, okay. So, these two complexes, okay, these two complexes are not the same, okay, they are non-superimposable mirror images of each other, okay. So, when you have, when you have a complex like this, where you have two monodentate ligands and two bidentate ligands, you can have geometric isomerism, you can have geometric isomerism, right, where you have the cis isomer and the trans isomer, right. The trans isomer will not show, the trans isomer will not show optical isomerism, whereas the cis isomer will exist as a pair of enantiomers, okay. So this is your mirror plane, okay, this is your mirror plane, right. And the trans isomer does not show optical, does not show optical because we have a line of symmetry here, right? We have a line of symmetry here in the trans isomer. Remember, chiral centers are asymmetric, right? So if it's a symmetric complex, it won't show, it won't show optical isomerism. So it does not show optical isomerism because it's symmetric, okay? And symmetric complexes will not show optical isomerism. All right, only asymmetric. So here we have an asymmetric complex, right? The, the cis isomer is asymmetric. The cis isomer actually exists as two different optical isomers. So for this particular, if I gave you a compound with this structural formula where we have two bidentate and two monodentate ligands, right? We have a total of three different isomers. We have the trans isomer, and then we have the two different, right, the two different mirror images of the cis isomer. So over here again, when you have when you have we have an octahedral complex with two bidentate ligands and two monodentate ligands. Okay, you're going to have, you're going to have geometric. Okay, that is cis trans in this case. Okay, plus optical. Okay, and the optical isomerism will only be shown by the cis isomer. So one last thing to note here is that the cis isomers also have a net dipole, right? The cis isomers also have a net dipole because again in the trans isomers the two identical ones are cancelling each other out in this case but in the cis isomers they are not cancelling each other out okay. So we have a net dipole in, in these two isomers.